Karbala Arabic, Karbala translate. Karbala, Persian, Kerbala also Kerbala, is a city in central Iraq, located about 100 km 62 miles southwest of Baghdad, and a few miles east of Lake Mill. Karbala is the capital of Karbala Governorate, and has an estimated population of 700,000 people 2015. The city, best known as the location of the Battle of Karbala in 680 CE, or the mosques of Imam Hussein and Abbas, is considered a holy city for Shiite Muslims in the same way as Mecca, Medina and Jerusalem. Tens of millions of Shiite Muslims visit the site twice a year, rivaling Mecca as a place of pilgrimage. The martyrdom of Hussein ibn Ali is commemorated annually by millions of Shiites. Up to 8 million pilgrims visit the city to observe Ashura the 10th day of the month of Muharram, which marks the anniversary of Husayn's death, but the main event is the Arbain the 40th day after Ashura, where up to 30 million visit the holy graves. Most of the pilgrims travel on foot from all around Iraq and more than 56 countries. Etymology <inaudible> 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 There are many opinions among different investigators, as to the origin of the word, Karbala. Some have pointed out that, Karbala, has a connection to the, Kabbalato, language, while others attempt to derive the meaning of word, Karbala, by analyzing its spelling and language. They conclude that it originates from the Arabic word, Kar Babel, which was a group of ancient Babylonian villages that included Nainawa, al ghadariya Karbela Karb -ilu, as in Arba Ilu Arbal, al Nawawis, and al hir This last name is today known as al hir and is where Husayn ibn Ali's grave is located. The investigator Yaqat al hamai had pointed out that the meaning of Karbala could have several explanations, one of which is that the place where Husayn ibn Ali was martyred is made of soft earth. al Kabbalat. According to Shiite belief, the archangel Gabriel narrated the true meaning of the name Karbala to Muhammad, a combination of Karb Arabic, ka -erb, the land which will cause many agonies and Bala Arabic, Bala afflictions. Topic. Climate Karbala experiences a semi-arid climate with extremely hot, dry summers and cool winters. Almost all of the yearly precipitation is received between November and April, though no month is truly wet. History Battle of Karbala The Battle of Karbala was fought on the Bear Deserts on the way to Kufa on October 10, 680 AD 10 61 AH. Both Husayn ibn Ali and his brother Abbas ibn Ali were buried by the local Bani Asad tribe, at what later became known as the Mashad al Husayn. The battle itself occurred as a result of Husayn's refusal of Yazid I's demand for allegiance to his caliphate. The Kufan governor, Ubaidallah ibn Ziyad, sent 30,000 horsemen against Husayn as he traveled to Kufa. The horsemen, under Umar ibn Sa'd, were ordered to deny Husayn and his followers water in order to force Husayn to agree to give an oath of allegiance. On the 9th of Muharram, Husayn refused, and asked to be given the night to pray. On 10 Muharram, Husayn ibn Ali prayed the morning prayer and led his troops into battle along with his brother Abbas. Many of Husayn's followers, including all of his present sons Ali Akbar, Ali Ashgar six months old, and his nephews Qasim, An and Muhammad were killed. In 63 AH 682 AD, Yazid ibn Muawiyah released the surviving members of Husayn's family from prison. On their way to the Mecca, they stopped at the site of the battle. There is record of Sulayman ibn Surid going on pilgrimage to the site as early as 65 AH 685 CE. The city began as a tomb and shrine to Husayn and grew as a city in order to meet the needs of pilgrims. The city and tombs were greatly expanded by successive Muslim rulers, but suffered repeated destruction from attacking armies. The original shrine was destroyed by the Abbasid Caliph al-Mutawakal in 850 but was rebuilt in its present form around 979, only to be partly destroyed by fire in 1086 and rebuilt yet again. Early modern Like Najaf, the city suffered from severe water shortages that were only resolved in the early 18th century by building a dam at the head of the Husayniya Canal. In 1737, the city replaced Isfahan in Iran as the main center of Shia scholarship. 
In the mid 18th century, it was dominated by the Dean of Scholarship, Yusuf al Barani, a key proponent of the Akbari tradition of Shia thought, until his death in 1772, after which the more state centric Usuli school became more influential. The Wahhabi sack of Karbala occurred in the 21st of April 1802, 1216 Hijri 1801, under the rule of Abdul Aziz bin Muhammad II, ruler of the first Saudi state, when 12,000 Wahhabi Muslims from Najd attacked the city of Karbala. The attack was coincident with the anniversary of Ghadir Qum event, or 10 Muharram. This fight left 3,000 to 5,000 deaths and the dome of the tomb of Husayn ibn Ali, grandson of Muhammad and son of Ali bin Abi Talib, was destroyed. The fight lasted for eight hours. After the first Saudi state invasion, the city enjoyed semi autonomy during Ottoman rule, governed by a group of gangs and mafia variously allied with members of the ulama. In order to reassert their authority, the Ottoman army laid siege to the city. On January 13, 1843 Ottoman troops entered the city. Many of the city leaders fled leaving defense of the city largely to tradespeople. About 3,000 Arabs were killed in the city, and another 2,000 outside the walls this represented about 15% of the city's normal population. The Turks lost 400 men. This prompted many students and scholars to move to Najaf, which became the main Shia religious center. Between 1850 and 1903, Karbala enjoyed a generous influx of money through the Oudh bequest. The Shia-ruled Indian province of Awad, known by the British as Oudh, had always sent money and pilgrims to the holy city. The Oudh money, 10 million rupees, originated in 1825 from the Awad Nawab Ghazi Ud Din Haider. One third was to go to his wives, and the other two thirds went to holy cities of Karbala and Najaf. When his wives died in 1850, the money piled up with interest in the hands of the British East India Company. The EIC sent the money to Karbala and Najaf per the wives' wishes, in the hopes of influencing the ulama in Britain's favour. This effort to curry favour is generally considered to have been a failure. Karbala's development was strongly influenced by the Persians, who were the dominant community for many years making up 75% of the city's population by the early 20th century. The Kamona family were custodians of the shrines for many years and effectively ran the city until it fell under the control of the British Empire in 1915. While the Kamona family surrendered rule over to the British and sought to work for and with the British, many notable Karbala clans continues to oppose the foreign invasion. One such clan is the historically well-known Karbala clan of Awad who has been inhabitants of the city for some 500 years. They, alongside others, fought directly against the British. According to the writings of Gertrude Bell, some of the Awad clan's sheikhs were banished after the control of the city for many years before returning to re-establish their land and community prestige. The Awad clan has historically been noted as one of the only clans in Karbala to actively oppose the British control and remain an influential family in the city to this day. The association of the city with Shia religious traditions led to it being treated with suspicion by Iraq's Sunni rulers. Under Saddam Hussein's rule, Shia religious observances in the city were greatly restricted and many non-Iraqi Shia were not permitted to travel there at all. In March 1991, the city was badly damaged and many killed when a rebellion by local Shia was put down with great force by Saddam's regime. The shrines and surrounding houses, cemeteries, and hospitals became riddled with machine gun fire and military shelling. By April 1991, Saddam Hussein began an intense demolition project around the shrines in order to create a concrete perimeter. This sanitary zone created a wide open space in between and around the shrines. The shrines were rebuilt by 1994. After the United States military forces invaded Iraq in 2003, the administration allowed for foreign Shia pilgrims to an unrestricted Ashura pilgrimage in decades. Tens of thousands of Shia Muslims from other countries visited U.S. embassies to get visit visas to attend Ashura in Karbala. The 2004 pilgrimage was the largest for decades, with over a million people attending from all over the world but mainly Iraqis. It was marred by bomb attacks on March 2, 2004, now known as the Ashura Massacre, which killed and wounded hundreds despite tight security in the city. A big Shia festival passed off peacefully amid fears of possible violence that brought thousands of troops and police into the city. 
Hundreds of thousands of Shia pilgrims who had come together to celebrate the Shabaniya ritual began leaving the southern city after September 9, 2006 climax ended days of chanting, praying and feasting. Heavy presence by police and Iraqi troops seem to have kept out suicide bombers who have disrupted previous rituals. On April 14, 2007, a car bomb exploded about 600 feet 180 meters from the shrine, killing 47 and wounding over 150. On January 19, 2008, two million Iraqi Shia pilgrims marched through Karbala city, Iraq to commemorate Ashura. 20,000 Iraqi troops and police guarded the event amid tensions due to clashes between Iraqi troops and Shia which left 263 people dead in Basra and Nasiriyah. <laughs> Main sites Al-Abbas Mosque Imam Hussein Shrine Airports, Karbala Northeast Airport Karbala International Airport located to the southeast of Karbala Ruins of Muhada, about 40 kilometers 25 miles to the west of the city Topic. Religious beliefs Topic. Mesopotamia in the Quran Some Shiites consider this verse of the Quran to refer to Iraq, land of the Shiite sacred sites of Kufa, Najaf, Karbala, Qadamiya and Samarra, since the monotheistic preachers Ibrahim Arabic, Abrahi Ym Abraham and Lut Arabic, Lu, Lot, who are regarded as prophets in Islam, are believed to have lived in the ancient Iraqi city of Ur, before going to the the Blessed Land. But we delivered him Ibrahim and Lut from their polytheistic opponents, and directed them to the land which we have blessed for the worlds. Aside from the story of Abraham and Lot in polytheistic Mesopotamia, there are passages in the Quran about Mount Judy, Babel and Karyat Yunus town of Jonah. <laughs> Hadith There are many Shiite traditions which narrate the status of Karbala. Karbala, where your grandson and his family will be killed, is the most blessed and sacred land on earth, and it is one of the valleys of paradise. God chose the land of Karbala as a safe and blessed sanctuary, 24,000 years before he created the land of the Kaaba and chose it as a sanctuary. Verily it Karbala will shine among the gardens of paradise, like a shining star shines among the stars for the people of earth. Not one night passes in which Gabriel and Michael do not go to visit him Hussain. Also there are many Sunni traditions which narrate the status of Husayn. Abu Huraira narrated, The Prophet looked toward Ali, Hassan, Husayn, and Fatima, and then said, I am in war with those who will fight you, and in peace with those who are peaceful to you. The Messenger of Allah said, Husayn is from me and I am from Husayn. The Messenger of Allah said, he who loves al Hassan and al Husayn has loved me, and he who makes them angry has made me angry. Quote, quote. Thus the tomb of the martyred Imam has acquired this great significance in Shiite tradition because the Imam and his fellow martyrs are seen as models of jihad in the way of God. Shiites believe that Karbala is one of the holiest places on earth according to the following traditions among others. The angel Gabriel narrated to Muhammad that, Karbala, where your grandson and his family will be martyred, is one of the most blessed and the most sacred lands on earth, and it is one of the valleys of paradise. The fourth Shiite Imam, that is Zayn al-Abidin narrated, God chose the land of Karbala as a safe and blessed sanctuary 24,000 years before he created the land of the Kaaba and chose it as a sanctuary. Verily it Karbala will shine among the gardens of paradise like a shining star shines among the stars for the people of earth. In this regard, Jafar al-Sadiq narrates, Allah, the Almighty, has made the dust of my ancestors' grave, Imam Husayn a. S., as a cure for every sickness and safety from every fear. It is narrated from Jafar that, The earth of the pure and holy grave of Husayn ibn Ali a. S. is a pure and blessed musk. For those who consume it, it is a cure for every ailment, and if our enemy uses it then he will melt the way fat melts. When you intend to consume that pure earth recite the following supplication. The famous quote, Every day is Ashura, every land is Karbala. Culture 
Topic: Sports. Kabbalah FC is a football club based in Karbala. Topic: Media. There are many references in books and films to Karbala, generally referring to Hussein's death at the Battle of Karbala. Hussein is often depicted on a white horse impaled by arrows. There are films and documentaries about the events of Karbala in both animated and realistic form. See external links. Karbala, when the skies wept blood. Safar e Karbala. Video footage of the actual city exists in a British documentary entitled Saddam's Killing Fields. The documentary shows the March 1991 destruction of the city by Saddam's army through the video camera of two brothers who lived in the city. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> University. Haza are the Islamic education institutions that are run collectively by Muaytahid or Alamas to teach Shia Muslims and guide them through the rigorous journey of becoming an Alim. In terms of the Hawaz in Karbala, after the death of a renowned Alama, the Sayyid Muhammad, the leadership in terms of teacher shifted to Taklid to Muaytahid. This was a significant factor that led to the leadership of ulama to reside in Karbala and as well as Najaf. Initially Karbala's Haza Islamic Education Institution consisted mostly of Iranians and Turkish ulama. After the death of Sharif ul ulama Mazandarani in 1830 and the repression of the Shia population by the Ottomans in 1843 both played an important role in the relocation of many ulamas and thus Najaf becoming the center of Shia Islamic leadership in education. As of now, there are two universities in Karbala. University of Karbala, which was inaugurated on March 1, 2002, is one of the top most universities in Iraq regarding academic administration, human resources, and scientific research. The Alalbayt International University was founded in September 2003 by Dr. Mohsen Salah Muhammad Bakir al Khazwini. The university has three major focuses Faculty of Law, Arts, and Islamic Law. Other majors of education such as medicine, agriculture, informatics etc. are still in the developing stages. Warith al Anbiya University in Karbala, has recently been established under a project of Hussein Holy Shrine, having the faculties of engineering, administration, economics, law and pathology, which is ready to receive students for the first academic year 2017-2018. Indian subcontinent In the Indian subcontinent, Karbala, apart from meaning the city of Karbala which is usually referred to as Karbala-e-Muala meaning Karbala the Exalted, also means local grounds where commemorative processions end and or tazia are buried during Ashura or Arban, usually such grounds will have shabi copy of Rauza or some other structures, in South Asia where tazia refer to specifically to the miniature mausoleums used in processions held in Maharam. It all started from the fact that the great distance of India from Karbala prevented Indian Shi'is being buried near the tomb of Husayn or making frequent pilgrimages to the tomb. This is the reason why Indian Shi'is established local Karbalas on the subcontinent by bringing soil from Karbala and sprinkling it on lots designated as future cemeteries. Once the Karbalas were established on the subcontinent, the next step was to bring Husayn's tomb shrine to India. This was established by building replicas of Husayn's mausoleum called Tazia to be carried in Muharram processions. Thousands of Tazias in various shapes and sizes are made every year for the months of mourning of Muharram and Safar, and are carried in processions and may be buried at the end of Ashura or Arbane. See also Battle of Karbala 1991 Uprising in Karbala 2003 Karbala bombings 2004 Iraq Ashura bombings 2007 Karbala bombings Arban Ashura Karbala, Iran Karbala, Faz Karbala, Zanjan List of casualties in Husayn's army at the Battle of Karbala Notes Topic References Topic Further reading 
Published in the 19th century, Louis de Sivry, ed. 1859. Carbon Law. Dictionnaire géographique, historique, descriptif, archéologique des pèlerinages anciens et modernes in French. Paris, published in the 20th century. Curbella. The Encyclopædia Britannica, 11th ed. New York, Encyclopædia Britannica, 1910, OCLC 14782424 published in the 21st century. Edmund Bosworth, ed. 2007. Karbala. Law. Historic Cities of the Islamic World. Leiden, Koninklijke Abril. Michael R. T. Dumper, Bruce E. Stanley, eds. 2008. Karbala. Law. Cities of the Middle East and North Africa, Santa Barbara, USA, ABC Clio Topic. External links Shia Shrines of Karbala – Sacred Destinations Shia Karbala Poetry Karbala – A Lesson for Mankind Karbala Quotes and Sayings Karbala and Martyrdom Karbala, the facts and the fairy tales Karbala, the chain of events